Hello, Morning Rush of Regulars. This is the morning after our big office party, thus cap day. <laughs> Plus, I got so many people sleeping in my house now, Sally's actually sleeping in my bed. That's when you know it got weird. With me. When the husband and wife are sleeping together. Yeah, when she agreed <laughs> to do that. <laughs> so, when I woke up this morning, you have to turn the alarm clock off on the very first bark. I got mine set for the dog barks. Boop, 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 boop. So, and then you have to get dressed in the dark. Don't even think about turning a light on. Now, is she as quiet if she comes to bed later than you or anything like that? I, I've been seeing some videos, which I find hysterical because yeah. it's so my life. Like when I wake up, I tiptoe yeah. and I, you know, barely close the doors and I don't turn the lights on and all that sort of stuff. And then, but when my wife comes in and I'm asleep, she's just like, excuse me, right. I, gotta, I gotta find something. Right. I'm trying to find this thing. And it's like, well, why do you have to be so loud? <laughs> but, um, oh yeah, she came to bed last night. She, she changed it from Fox News, which is the first problem. Oh, because you sleep, as everyone knows, under the warm glow of Fox mm -hmm. News. That has been a consistent in your life for what, 10, 15 years And now. I turned the volume down, the, the exact number, just so it's so quiet. I had to stay quiet to hear what they're saying. Okay. That way, when I fall asleep, it's not too loud. Got it. It's delicate balance on the volume. And then um, it, she comes in, she changes the channel to like Turner Classic Movies, cranks it nearly wide open, and, and insists on laying there next to me, watching or looking at videos on Facebook at the same time. All that's happening right All that is happening. I get, and, and, and she's thrashing around. I don't know what she's doing over there. <laughs> So I, I just lay there and act like I'm asleep. Don't, because if you if she knows you're awake, she's gonna ask you to get up and do something. <laughs> Go get me something to drink. Yeah. Would, you, would you get up and and uh, turn the air conditioner down? Because it's a little hot back here. <laughs> I'm laying there under three uh, three blankets. Yeah. I'm nearly I'm nearly just I feel like a zombie, because I put myself under so many different layers. If the house going on fire, there's a good chance I couldn't get out of the bed. Well, she needs her Christmas onesie on and the fireplace roaring. There you go. Anyway, enough about my problems. Here's the thing. All that, and I don't think that they're getting it over at the house. I don't think they understand. I don't think that they've gotten me the Christmas gift that I want. So tomorrow is official nationally. What is it? Drop. I, th I think it's called... Uh, give a hint or drop a hint as to yeah. what, what you want for Christmas Day. That's so it. That's the day tomorrow. So you just start dropping hints. Yeah. How do you drop a hint, Jonathan? Like, what do you want? I'm going to text message her a web link. That's a pretty big hint. That this is what I want? And she'll, ask me, she'll say, what was that about? I didn't mean to send that to you. Oh, you're going to send that to your girlfriend for you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's like uh, Ralphie, right? If Didn't I Ralphie... said that, she'd probably say, well, I hope she gets it for you, because I didn't. Ralphie spent all that time trying to build up his argument and his case for how to tease his mom and dad yeah. into getting him the... Uh, Red Rider the, BB gun. The Red Rider, and then he blew it. He just blurted it. it right out, and of course, oh, Ralphie, you're never going to get that. Shoot your eye out, kid. I asked John two nights ago, I said, what was your favorite Christmas? He said the Red Rider BB gun Christmas was the best. Oh, the gift identifies the year. Yes. Hmm. Do you, have you spent more money on other gifts for the for the kids? Oh, totally. It? How much was that baby gun? Twenty nine dollars. Yes. Oh yeah, totally. I spent more money than that. And yet, that's the one he remembers. Yes. All right. Well, you got to drop a hint. So tomorrow, take advantage of the radio show because we got right. a hundred thousand people listening. So maybe yeah. somebody else will get you. <laughs> maybe if it's not your spouse listening, <laughs> somebody yeah. else will say, you know what, that guy or gal sounded like they needed that hair dryer. Or if you know nobody's going to get it, just go ahead and start your GoFundMe page and we'll promote it for you. Who knows? Beautiful. So everybody might chip in a couple of bucks. Now, we also got to give away more Alan Jackson concert yep. tickets tomorrow, right? Are we, uh... Silver Bells. That's that... the song you're listening for. Alan Jackson singing Silver Bells. And remember, we wait till caller five, but people start dialing as soon as they hear it. Well, don't hang up. Today we had the butterfly effect. Somebody... Caller three on line three stopped calling. They hung up, and another person jumped in as caller three. The butterfly effect. Caller five wouldn't have even made it because they would have been caller six. The person who heard us say, sorry, you're caller four, now we can reveal to you, you would have been caller five. And That's number, right. Number three done their job. 
Yeah. They did. They hung they out. So keep it ringing until after the, I'll wait till the song is played completely through, and then we start counting it down. Okay, we get to call it five, you get tickets, and you get in for Friday morning's drawing, not tomorrow, but Friday, we give away the AJ's Backstage Experience, where you can rock the jukebox. One of the big stories that came out yesterday here in Columbia that has Jonathan a little upset, I think, is the Gamecocks have announced that they're going to begin selling beer and wine at home sporting events for the women's and men's basketball teams, the baseball team, and the football team. And I'm thinking this will maybe make the losing more palatable for I'm some of us. It's a bad idea. Why do you say such things? Well, I can tell you, and my Clemson friends know this, uh, they revel in it. You can walk in and out of the gate anytime you like just by showing your ticket stub at any Clemson game. At halftime, everybody walks out, opens their trunk, gets more liquor to drink or whatever, and then they go back in. Well, as of recent, you might have noticed a lot of fans are leaving at halftime because they're winning by 40 points, and now they've had so much brown liquor they don't feel like walking back up the hill. So they just stay gone for the second half. But now at the Carolina games, they'll tell you there's no pass outs. Meaning you can't go out and come back in. Not, yeah. not that you can't just drink till you pass out. Well, now we're going to have plenty of pass outs because we go to a Carolina game and start drinking in the stadium. This could, now, we're, now we're angry and we're drunk. Well, the university would say that the national uh, research has shown that uh, the schools that allow they, they can market before and after when they started selling uh, beer and wine at games. And there's less drunk driving accidents, there's less fights, there's less this, that, and the other thing because it's so easily accessible. It's kind of like the argument in Europe they don't have a drinking age, or maybe it's 12 or right. something. And so they say if they're used to being around the wine and the liquor, kids yeah, recognize but they're, they're talking about LSU. They use LSU as, a, as one of their studies. Everybody at LSU is happy. Well, they're never angry drunks at LSU. Yeah, LSU this year was the for the first time they were able to sell beer, and they because the SEC just passed it what like maybe three or four months ago, and LSU said we're selling beer, so they did uh, 2.2 million in beer sales. They have to split that with the distributor, the beer distributor. So they got about 1.1 million dollars. Uh, I think it's Indiana Tumbleweeds, mar you know, marching it down there. They got the they only sold I think like 400 thousand dollars worth of beer. Oh, so I guess not as uh, excited about the beer sales in Indiana. But there's never anything to do in Indiana, so I guess... <laughs> what are you talking about? It's the home of Boilermakers. That's half, half Boilermakers beer. I thought they were the Hoosiers. Um, Purdue's Boilermakers, Indiana's Hoosiers. Oh, okay. Well, it was the University of Indiana that had the... Uh, yeah. Who's been, Hoosier had been drinking my Boilermaker? That's the whole thing. <laughs> the whole state is drunk. <laughs> They're so drunk they don't need to buy any beer at the game. <laughs> So, but Jonathan has legitimate concerns that this is going to be a mess. It's not a good idea. We've already got people. Now, listen, I understand you get caught up in the emotion of it. Heck, I've gotten caught up in the emotion of it. Remember, I'm the guy that took myself out of the gymnasium and out of the head coaching job at a, when I was coaching a church basketball team because of my mouth and because of the way I was yelling at, the, at my team. I said, that's it. i gotta, I got to take myself out of this. You get to the game, you're emotionally involved. Now, if we start stumbling and turning over the ball, you get to a basketball game the other night. This is why nobody's talking about the Carolina-Clemson basketball game. It's not because Clemson doesn't care about basketball. If they had won, they'd be talking about it. Well, probably not. In the first half, both teams collectively, 30 turnovers. 30. Maybe That's they started what, drinking early. Maybe, maybe, was, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> we're testing it here at the Carolina Clemson yeah. game December 20th or whatever. Yeah, they insisted like three or four times that Kotsar actually had a turnover. No, he didn't. I'm marking that down as an assist. The ball was thrown directly to a, a team member of the opposing team. That's an, And the guy shot it and made a point. That's an assist. That's the way I put that in the book. Mm. Well, uh, it's, like I said, the first time it's going to be tried out is January 2nd when uh, the Lady Geek. Lady Gamecocks play, I think it's Kentucky. And then January 7th, the men have a home game against Virginia, maybe? Oh, if it's Virginia, we're guaranteed to lose now, right? But uh, I, I, you're not going to see young people taking advantage of this because it's $8 for a 16-ounce beer. There's no way these kids are going to be paying $2 an ounce or whatever no. for the beer. It's just way too expensive for 
only the ultra rich will buy these. These would be the people that Bernie Sanders. Beer. Yeah, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren hate these people who can afford it. Eight dollars a beer? No, yeah. no, that's uh, that's that's upper level action there. Yes, it is. So we'll get into that story tomorrow. Okay. Uh, is that one of the? I forget. Is that six ten? No, that's seven ten. Seven ten. Seven ten. We'll break it. Six ten. We're talking about dropping your hands. You got it. And we're already out of time. We have so much fun on this podcast. Hey, by the way, the number is nine seven eight nine two six seven. It's nine seven eight W C O S. You use that to call in. Tell us what you're thinking about the Gamecocks drinking, and also about oh yeah, if you want to drop your own hint, you can do that. Reach out to us on Twitter. Got some things going on you want us to talk about. And we'll look forward to, oh, and the Alan Jackson tickets, same number, 978-9267. Tomorrow morning, win your tickets. You got tomorrow morning and Friday morning. That's it. We got no, then Santa's bag is empty. We'll talk to you in the morning rush.